Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion on curve fitting, right? So we uh, said in curve fitting, we have sometimes a set of data points that we want to fit a model to, we want to fit an equation to, right? And uh, what we started with, we started with what is called regression analysis. So the idea here is we're going to fit a line to these data points by minimizing the sum of the square of the residuals, right? And we said if we have a linear trend, we would do what is called linear regression. And we went through that and we wrote a linear regression code. But we also in the second lesson, the lesson after that, we went through um, when we have actually curved data points that follow a polynomial trend and we created a polynomial regression code associated with that. Now, we also said that the polynomial regression code that you also see on your right here can handle any uh, order polynomial. It could also handle the linear regression that we did in, our, in the first lesson when we were discussing uh, curve fitting. Now, we also said that curved data points can follow a polynomial trend, but they can also follow more complex trends like an exponential trend or a logarithm trend or a power trend. So the question here is, if they follow these types of trends, how do we apply regression analysis? And the great thing about this is, is that you know everything that you need to know in terms of doing that, in terms of the code. So we're not going to develop any new codes in this lesson. So the way we do this is we apply something called transformation or more specifically a specific type of transformation is called linearization. So we're going to take those trends, the power trend, the exponential trend or the saturation growth trend that we're going to go through in this lesson and we're going to linearize them. We're going to take these curved functions and we're going to make them into a straight trend. And in the first lesson, remember what we what did we do with a straight trend? We uh, we did linear regression to that straight trend, and so we can fit a line to that straight trend that we transformed our original function to. Then we can take whatever information we get from this linear regression and get whatever the A and B is to the say the power trend or the exponential trend or the saturation growth trend. And all of this is going to make sense as we move along here. So the first one that I'm going to start with is the power equation, or if we have a power trend. And a power trend is basically takes this form. Y is equal to AX to the power B. Okay, so how do we fit a set of lines using this type of model? Okay, so what we're going to do is, again, we're going to do something called transformation or uh, a specific type of transformation, linearization. We're going to take this equation and we're going to turn it into a linear function. And the way you do this is you use what are called logarithm transformations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log of both sides. Okay, so I'm going to say take the log of 10, base 10 of both sides. You can take any log of base, uh, whatever you would like, just as long as you do whatever you do on the left, you do on the right. So I'm going to take the log of y and the log of this. Now, if you remember with the properties of the log, if I have a log of a multiple, it's just the log of the sum, right? So log of axb is the same as log of a plus log of xb. Another property, another rule of logs is that if I have a power here, I can take it down as a constant, right? Now, I want you to look at this equation that I have here. This is a linear equation, right? Where my y here is the log of y, and my x here is the log of x. b here is my slope, and the log of a is my intercept. So if I take these points that follow this trend, for instance, and I got their equivalent log of y and log of x, and I plotted it, it would give me a straight trend. So let's actually see if that's, that, in fact, is true. So let's say log of, say, I'll take the log of x, and I will uh, autofill this. Let me just correct this. So I'm going to say here I'm going to put log of x, and here I'm going to put log of y. So I'm going to say here log of y now, which is this. So if I do this, you can see that I actually created a straight trend. I took a trend that follows this curved path that we're trying to say, okay, it's a power trend. 
and we went ahead and linearized it using a logarithm transformation that we did here. Basically, we took the log of both sides and we applied two of the log rules. One of it is the log of the multiple is the sum of the logs here and also taking this constant down here. So we applied those two rules. So look at this. So now we linearize it. Now we can actually uh, best fit a curve uh, to these to this um, set of points here. So I can take these set of points which are correspond to this linear line and I can get the slope of this line which is the slope is going to be B right based on my transformation if I get the slope of this line basically I got the power here right the B power but if I got the intercept, the intercept here is the log of A. So I have log of A, and through a few manipulations, I can extract A out of this. Okay, so let's go ahead. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and, and run the code. So this is the code that you've seen uh, prior. So the few things that we're going to change is we're going to change the n. So here we have five points. So n is equal to five. Uh, we're doing linear regression, which is the first order polynomial. So the order is one. Another thing that I've changed is where I'm extracting my points. So my extracting my points from this third column and this fourth column here. And also I change down here that when I'm displaying, I'm only displaying S of one and S of two because you know we have only two outputs, only two unknowns when it comes to linear regression. And also I'm gonna output the effectiveness of my model using R squared. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this code all right, perfect. So now I have B is 1.75 and log of A is negative 0 0.30022. So if I, for this model, we can see that B here is B here. So I'm just going to say equal to this B. So I have the B for the power model here from this linear regression. Now log of A is just, if I can extract the log, since this is base 10, I can just say 10 to the power of this log of A will give me a. So if I do that, so actually let's use Excel's inbuilt trend to see if we actually uh, did this regression correctly. So I'm going to say power and I'm going to say display the equation and display the R squared. So you can see it's actually a perfect match. The R squared is one, so it explains 100% of the points. We have here a 0 0.5009, say 0 0.5009, which we extracted from here. And this is 1.75 one uh seven so let me let me increase this a little bit so you can see how we actually created a power uh trend by using linear regression so this is usually what is called linearization so this is in terms of a power trend so let's go into say an exponential trend so the difference between a power trend and exponential trend is this x turns into an e and so to a power of bx. So it's y equal to a e to the power of bx. So I'm trying to get a, I'm trying to get b. So let's actually do the same type of logarithm uh, transformation. So I'm going to take the log of both sides. So in this case, I'm going to just use the natural log. We, you can use the uh, any log ag uh, again, just as long as whatever you do on the left, you do on the right. So I'm going to take the log of both sides again, uh, the log of a multiple, we can break this up into ln of a plus ln of e to the bx. And again, this uh, power can come down here. So now we have bx here and the natural log of e, right, is just equal to one. So we can drop this out. So we end up with ln of y equal ln of a bx. So now I can plot ln of y versus x and I should get a straight trend. So x remains the same, right? So I'm going to just equate this to x and drag it down here. And we now want to plot it against ln of these y's. And if I plot these, I should get a straight or a straight-ish trend. So we're taking the same points here. So this these are the same points here. Here we fit a um, power trend. We found the power trend fits it perfectly, right? So now we're trying to fit the same points to an exponential trend. And we're going to see how the exponential trend fits it. Does it fit it good? Does it fit it poorly compared to the power trend here?
So let's actually go ahead and apply linear regression. It's the same thing. Uh, we I still have the same five points, uh, first order, and they're, the points are in the same place here. So let's actually run the code. Okay, so you can see that the R squared here is 90.9472, uh, but here when I'm fitting a power trend, it's 1. So the power trend explains most of the behavior of these um, points, but not so much the exponential trend. So we can see that B here is the same. So we can uh, say that B here is equal to B here. So the B in terms of this linear trend is equal to the B here. But in terms of the A, we're going to do a few manipulations. So here we have the base uh, of E. So here we have base of E. So it's going to be the exponential at 1 to the power of this law or ln of A. So that should give us uh, these values. So this is A and B. So let's actually use Excel's inbuilt uh, trend to see if these values are, um, are similar. So here's the exponential. Let's display the equation and this. Um, okay, so let's blow this up a little bit. So here we see that A is actually in fact 0.3431 uh, uh, and here we have 0.6853, so same values. And this is the same R9472. So we took the same values uh, with the power. So we fit a power here, fit it perfectly with the R squared. Of one, but here when if when we fit a uh, exponential, we got a decent R squared at 0.9472, but not as well as the power. But we all we but you can actually see what I want to show you here, how we took an exponential, transformed it into linear, applied linear regression, and we got the same values as using the same trend finding technique in Excel. Okay, so let's actually go to one more example, which is called the uh, saturation uh, gross um, equation. And the reason it's called saturation gross equation because there's an initial gross here, but it's in, then it plateaus, and this is where the saturation comes from. So this is the gross and saturation equation, or also called the saturation growth equation. <clears throat> so it takes the form of y is equal to a ln of x plus b. So you can see we need to find a and b. So if I'm going to transform this into a linear, you can find the y stays the same, y is equal to the y here. But now the x in this equation is the ln of x uh, or the x is in this equation. So I can go ahead and say ln of x here. And you can see that the y's stay the same. And you can see here, we got an uh, an actual straight trend. And that's not surprising, right? So we have this. We say, okay, so y in this linear, linearized function is just going to be a direct, sub, a direct uh, substitution of this y. But the x's here is the ln of x's of this equation. Okay, but you can see that there there is a straight relationship between or the direct relationship between the a and b from this linearized equation to the a and b from this equation up here. So again, let's go ahead. Uh, here we have actual um, here ten um, ten points. So let's change this to ten, and everything else uh, stays the same. So let's run this. So we have point eight or 0 0.9808, so this is the same as Excel got here. 11.04, same thing. Negative 0.26192, same thing here. So we did the linear, linear um, regression correctly. And you can see that there is a direct relationship between the A and B. So when we go up here, you find that the A is 11.046, and the B is negative 0.261, uh, point, uh, point 0.2619. So this is called the saturation uh, growth uh, curve. So can let's actually recap what we the main thing main takeaways of this um, lesson. So in this lesson we know that all the all the curve trends that we have are not all polynomial trends. We have trends like the power trend, the exponential trend, the saturation growth trend. All of them are curved, but they don't follow a polynomial trend. 
right? So the question here is how do we fit this? And we fit this using a concept called linearization. We take these equations and we apply a few manipulations, in this case a very specific type of transformation which is called logarithm transformation. We did that and we got a linear version of it. We applied our, the linear regression that we know and from the information that we have we, we found out what are in this case the A and B here. Uh, we took the same uh, points and we applied exponential equation and we again did our uh, linearization and got um, the A and B that we were uh, looking for to fit an exponential um, equation. But we also found when we took those data points and we fit a power, the power had an R squared of 1. So that means the power explained 100% of the data points, but here it only explained 94.72% uh, of it. Now, in the gross and saturation, there was a very easy linearization. We just said the y stay the same, but now the x's of the linearized is just the ln of x's of the original equation. And we did the linear regression on that. We got these values. It was a direct relationship between a and b. And then we got this gross and saturation uh, final model. Uh, for this uh, for these set of data points and we find this model is actually really good at 98.08% um, effectiveness. Well this marks the end of this lesson and I will see you in the next lesson.